A 12 gauge copper wire, commonly used in household wiring, has a diameter of 2.053 millimeters. There are 8.00 times 10 to the 28th conduction electrons per cubic meter in copper. If the wire carries a constant DC current of 5.00 amps, what is the drift speed of the electrons? Explain why a thinner copper wire carrying a current of 5.00 amps has a larger drift speed, and how long will it take an electron to move one meter along this wire? So in this problem, we're trying to figure out how fast, or really actually how slow, the drift speed of electrons are in a wire. Let's take a look at our copper wire with a quick schematic. So we are given that our copper wire has a diameter equal to 2.053 millimeters. Now this is copper, and we're given that copper has 8.00 times 10 to the 28th electrons per cubic meter. For this problem, we're also given that there is a DC current of 8.00 amps in the wire. So what that current means is, is that we have electrons moving through our wire. I'll just indicate this to be the direction of current. And if that's the direction of current, you know that the actual direction of the negative charges in this wire, they will actually be moving to the left with a certain drift speed because negative charges move opposite the direction of this positive current. For part A, we need to find what that drift speed is. To begin, I know a connection between the number of conduction electrons per volume, a cross-sectional area of a conductor, and drift speed. And that connection is in the form of the electron current, that the electron current is equal to the number of conduction electrons times the cross-sectional area through which those electrons move times the drift speed of the electrons in that material. We're not given the electron current though, we're actually given the electric current. However, we know that there is an easy relationship between electric current and electron current, that the current is equal to just the magnitude of the value of the charge carrier E, E, remember, is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. So that current is directly proportional to the electron current, where the constant of proportionality is just the magnitude of the value of charge of our charge carrier. With this set, so we know the value of I, capital I, that is the current, we know that that I divided by E is equal to our electron current. And the electron current, remember, is the number density of charge carriers times the cross-sectional area through, those, through which those charge carriers are moving times the drift speed. Well, with some simple algebraic rearrangement, we get that the drift speed is the ratio of the electric current to number of conduction electrons per volume and the value of E, the charge of an electron in magnitude, and the cross-sectional area. We, are, we know that this wire, and we're going to assume that this wire is cylindrical, so the cross-sectional area of this cylinder is given as pi times the radius squared, which is the same thing as pi 
times the diameter squared over 4 of this wire. So this means that the drift speed can be expressed in terms of the diameter, and that's going to be equal to pi times the diameter squared over 4. You could check my algebra on this, but the 4 is going to come up into the numerator. So here is our expression for the drift speed of a typical electron in our wire. Let's go ahead and see actually how slow this really is for this copper wire. In the denominator, we have 8.00 times 10 to the 28th electrons per cubic meter times the magnitude of the charge on an electron times pi times the diameter squared, which is 2.053 times 10 to the minus 3 meters quantity squared. And in the numerator, we have 4 times the current. And the current is given as 8.00 amps. Now let's do some unit checking and cancellation. In the denominator, I see that there is a meter squared that will cancel with the meter squared, leaving us with the reciprocal meter in the denominator. Okay, let's check our units. In the numerator, we have amps. In the denominator, we have a coulomb per meter. Well, remember, an amp is a coulomb per second. In the denominator, we have a coulomb per meter. Coulomb in the numerator cancels with a coulomb in the denominator. We end up with units of the meter per second. Well, this is great because we are looking for drift speed, and so we needed our units to be in meters per second. So our units check. When I plug this into my calculator, I get that the drift speed is equal to 1.89 times 10 to the minus fourth meters per second. This is extremely slow. This is the same thing as saying that the drift speed of a conduction electron is 0 0.189 millimeters per second. So barely two tenths of one millimeter per second is the speed in which these drift in which these electrons are drifting in a circuit. A snail can literally move faster than this. To give, us, to give us some perspective, let's answer how long will it take an electron to move one meter along this wire? Well, assuming that the electrons aren't accelerating, so this is a steady current of, fi of five amps, we know that distance traveled is equal to velocity. In this case, we'll look at the drift speed, assume everything's moving along the same line, times the interval of time. So if we want to know how long it takes, it's just the distance moved divided by the drift speed. So the distance moved and we're given that the distance moved will be one meter divided by the drift speed, which ends up being 4i times e n e pi diameter over diameter squared. And when we plug in our values for this, we get 5.30 times 10 to the third seconds. Well, what is this in terms of hours? This is about 1.47 hours. 
Wow, it takes almost an hour and a half for those conduction electrons to move just one meter in this copper wire. That's extremely slow, and that's directly due to the fact of the large number of random thermal um, interactions and collisions in our wire causing these conduction electrons to move extremely slow on average. Now part B says explain why a thinner copper wire carrying a current of 5 amps it has a larger drift speed. Well that stems to what we found for our drift speed. Notice we found that our drift speed is directly proportional to current, which is great. The greater the current, the more electrons you have moving per unit of time, or the faster your electrons move. But this also says that drift speed is inversely proportional to the diameter of the wire squared. Well, what this means is if a wire is thinner, it has a smaller diameter. If the denominator is a smaller number, then the overall fraction becomes a larger number. So the thinner the wire, the faster those electrons move. Now, you can think of it like this more qualitatively. We have a certain amount of current. So that amount of current, and, and let's sketch this out. If we have two wires with the same amount of current, so one wire is up here, and we will say this wire has five amps of current, and we have a second wire thinner with five amps of current. Well, remember, current is the rate at which charge moves, charge per coulomb. So if we have a larger wire, then that in essence means we have a lot of charge that we're able to move. So that amount of charge can move fairly slowly in comparison to this thinner wire. And this thinner wire we have to move essentially the same amount of charge past a particular point. So if we have to move the same amount of charge and that charge is spread out more on a longer linear length, then those charges are gonna have to move faster than in the small, than in the larger wire in order to have the same amount of current. And so conceptually, it makes sense that we just showed that the current is inversely proportional to the square of the diameter. And that's just a reflection of the fact that those charges have to move quicker to get the same number of charges moving past the same point in the same amount of time to give us a current of 5 amps.